Okay, let's say you work in the emergency room and approximately like at 1 a.m. at night this dad brings his 17 year old son complaining of chest pain as well as heart racing. He feels his heart is palpitating out of his chest. He also tells you that he may have some shortness of breath when he takes a deep breath. Okay? And he's a young guy, so you're in the emergency room, so you get an EKG, an electrocardiogram, and then they give you this. And then they also, you draw some labs, including a troponin, because it's a cardiac enzyme for cardiac injury, and your troponin comes back elevated. So, what could this be? After a good history, you also find out that the patient had recently had the Pfizer vaccine four days ago, the second dose, which was unremarkable. He had no symptoms at the time. So what's going on? All right. Welcome to the channel. If you're new, my name is Facundo Gonzalez, uh, emergency resident in New York. And subscribe, please, it's free. Just do it, I'll give you a second to do that. Okay, enough. Let's get to the video. This is actually a classic presentation of post-COVID vaccine pericarditis slash myocarditis, okay? It's been all over the news recently now that they started vaccinating younger population. So as you can see on these many sources, everywhere is coming out that there have been a lot of cases of young adults, especially in the ages of I would say less than 30 years old, but mostly 16 and older, having chest pain, shortness of breath, palpitations, a few days following the administration of the Pfizer vaccine or the Moderna vaccine. It's a specific to the mRNA vaccines, okay? So it is a known entity that has been going on. All these cases get reported, and I have reported cases myself to the CDC, and just a disclaimer, the case I presented was a combination of the different cases I have seen. So I changed the gender, the age, the symptoms, so there's no confidentiality problems, okay? So, let's see what this is. Well, pericarditis is inflammation of the sac that surrounds the heart. It's usually a thin tissue that has two layers, but that pericardium can get inflamed due to either autoimmune response or post-viral infection and you get this inflammation of the pericardium that hurts. Or you can get your actual myocardium, which is the myo is muscle, cardium, the cardiac muscle gets inflamed, leading to discomfort as well, okay? So this has been shown with the vaccine. So now let's go over some findings. The findings are this EKG give you a second to look at it I don't know if you're in the medical field or this is just interest to you but this EKG is classic for pericarditis okay you're going to see diffuse meaning in all the leads you're gonna see ST segment elevations and depressions of the PR interval as you can see in this picture also when your heart undergoes any type of damage or insult to it there's a protein that you can test in blood which is called troponin so that troponin level was elevated and now i will review the ekg in a little more detail that way you can learn especially in the medical field this is very important you have to know the classic findings of pericarditis okay so let's review the ekg all right so let's review this ekg which was presented to you on the initial presentation. So this EKG is the classic EKG for pericarditis. You're gonna have, as you saw on the other picture, 
the diffuse ST segment elevations as well as diffuse PR interval depression. So if we take a look here on B5, there's an obvious elevation of the ST segment, which is this part, and then depression of the PR interval. Then B6, we see the same pattern, this elevation right here, and the PR interval is depressed. We see here on ABF, this ST segment elevation over here and the depression of the PR interval. We also have two, lead two, again, classic, B1. You can even say ST segment elevations in three. And there you have it. So this is classic EKG that you have to know, especially if you're studying medicine. And then something that was taught to me by a master of EKG is ABR is also known as the average reciprocal of all the other leads. So if you see ST segment elevations in all the other leads, you're going to have depressions on ABR, which we do. That is depressed. Okay. I hope you learned and you enjoyed. Now, the thing about this is that it does have a very good prognosis. Most patients, like greater than 90%, get better in a few days. Some may have to have frequent visits to the cardiology for the next few months. Some may be advised to not play sports or do any strenuous physical activity for one to two months. That way they don't strain their heart. So that's a perfect excuse for playing video games at home, I guess. So otherwise, these kids do very well. There's no concerns. And at the end of the day, they, all these societies and CDC are still recommending the vaccine because at the end of the day, the benefits outweigh the risk. So if you were to get COVID, you can have very severe symptoms and even death. Therefore, having this transient episode of pericarditis, myocarditis, is worth it. That's the, the knowledge. That's what is thought. Okay. So in conclusion, there is this known entity as post-vaccine myocarditis slash pericarditis in young adults. It is happening. It's a real thing. It has a good prognosis. It will get better in a few days. But of course, you need to get checked. So if for whatever reason, your child, you, someone has chest pain, that's something you don't mess with. You don't mess with your heart. So if you have any discomfort in your chest, difficulty breathing, you have to go get checked because first you have to rule out all the actual causes of cardiac injury, cardiac pain, pulmonary discomfort, pneumonia, pulmonary embolism, all the crazy things you have to rule out first before you can say, oh yes, he got a vaccine four days ago and now he has these symptoms, okay? So I hope you enjoy this video and subscribe like the video, let me know in the comments what you think, which videos you want me to do next, okay? Thank you so much.